Today, we will find out if light speed can make our portfolios go any faster, and we will begin right now. For those of you who are thinking this may be a space video, well, yeah, that is completely fair, as I do have a thing for space. However, light speed communications is a point of sale and e commerce provider that is based out of Montreal. Since its formation in 2005, light speed has grown well beyond our Canadian borders. I do know there are some light speed fans in the community, as a few of of them have requested this deep dive. Who am I to disappoint what the community wants? We are going to find out in this video if Lightspeed truly is worth all that fandom. Before we don our Lightspeed tees, let me know in the comments if this is your first real look into Lightspeed. I will admit, it is my first ever deep dive into them, and I am excited to see what we are going to find. As always, I am very grateful to see you all here in the home of free financial content on YouTube. If you are new, please subscribe right now so you won't miss a single moment and a huge thank you for that click. Lightspeed has been around for 17 years and initially they were solely about point of sale platforms for their retail partners. They have evolved beyond brick and mortar retail and have made a significant foray into e-commerce. They have a software as a service platform which provides their clientele the ability to engage with their customers, manage their business, accept payments, and encourages their growth. The first thought I had was, isn't this kind of what Shopify does? How does Lightspeed provide extra value to their customer base? Lightspeed, well, they boast that their inventory management, purchasing options, special orders, and layaway options, as well as the fact they do not take a cut of their customer sales, makes them very attractive compared to Shopify. They may be right, but as always, we never take the word of words, as we need to see those numbers. <laughs> Let's start with some surface data. Their market cap is $3.5 billion, making them a mid-cap company. Their beta comes in at a pretty high 2.96, which means they are very, very volatile compared to the market average. Their earnings per share comes in at negative 2.64, and they really do not have any concerns with future dilution, though they did experience a good amount of dilution in the last year, resulting in a 4.5% increase in their outstanding shares. With a negative EPS, their current earnings are unsustainable, and we can clearly see already that Lightspeed is more than likely unprofitable. Their price to earnings ratio comes in at negative 7.50, which is not surprising. That negative PE ratio means that they are losing money. Their earnings growth came in at negative 22.9% compared to the industry average of 17.4%. Seeing they are unprofitable, let's look at their price to sales ratio, which is 4.20. The price to sales ratio for the Canadian software industry average comes in at 3.50. So based on that, Lightspeed may be a wee bit overvalued. However, if we look at their fair PS ratio of 4.90, it does improve the situation a wee bit. However, if you calculate their fair value based on calculated future cash flows, we get another story. My good buds over at simplywall.st and their discounted cash flow model are predicting a fair value of $8.00. 16 cents. That does leave room to fall further. If we shift to returns, Lightspeed is a 100% growth stock, so no dividends. They entered 2021 with a share price of $77.77 and fell to $52.73 by year's end. This results in a return of investment of negative 32.17%. This is pretty bad. The fall is even bigger as they did peak at $161.55 in September of 2021. That is a total drop of 67%. Holy banana bread. Now do keep in mind, some of that drop is because of the dilution that I mentioned. So far this year, they have fallen to $23.88, and that is an ROI of negative 54.71%. Between 2001 and this year, I would be nervous about this stock if I'm completely honest. It is time to look at their debt. Their total debt is $29.9 million, and that is the absolute shining part of their fundamentals. When we look beyond debt and take in all of their liabilities, they come out way ahead in both the short and long term. Short term, they have $1.1 billion in assets compared to $181 million in liabilities. 
if we look long term, they have the same $1.1 billion in assets compared to $28.2 million in liabilities. This really is pretty good. But is it enough compared to those other fundamentals? They weren't pretty. I guess we're going to find out right now because here is my final verdict. These fundamentals are simply not very good for the short to midterm investor. Lightspeed is currently not living up to their namesake and they will be struggling to get back into the black. And it could be a very, very long journey. Short to midterm, this is a company you may not want to look at as it will take a lot of time to make your profits on that investment. Long term though is a different story as this company will eventually get back on track. They could be a good investment if you are looking for more than three to four years out. I want to like Lightspeed, but based on their fundamentals, that relationship simply needs a lot of time to simmer. The fun does not have to end here because you can always watch my video on day trading that I have linked on the left or you can check out the video on the right that YouTube thinks you will like. Your click will decide who is right and I will see you in the next video.